Okay, so this tutorial, we're just going to go through and talk about some of the f different file types you guys are going to be working out, working with throughout your guys' design careers. Um, and just going through the, initially the raw materials, the file types, the size, and then the resolution of those things. Uh, all right, and so um, first thing you guys are going to probably be dealing with um, are scans of your guys' sketches, uh, renderings, photographs, existing graphics. Um, so, and I'll go through a lot more of this as we, the semester progresses, but you guys should have a sense of uh, where this content is coming from. Um, most of these first three are all going to be raster graphics, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, and existing graphics, so those are going to be, um, can come in as illustrator or vector graphics, um, or you can bring them in also as raster graphics as well. Okay, and so... Uh, primarily here, the thing that I want you guys to get out of this um, is the difference between raster graphics and vector graphics. So raster-based graphic is um, anything that can become pixelated. And so uh, nothing better than an 8-bit Mario here where we start to see this uh, really, really nice small uh, and looks pretty clean. But as we start to scale him up and grow him up, uh, we start to really be able to feel the sort of blocky edges. Um, and so it's no longer smooth based on our visual acuity. Now, in vector graphics, this is not the case. Everything uh, where these are based on uh, pixels, and so there's a certain number of pixels wide by a certain number of pixels tall, um, like image re resolution for photographs, like uh, anything you guys might have seen on megapixels and things like that. Uh, those are going to get pixelated as you blow them up. Um, that's not the case in vector graphics because everything is based on mathematics. And so no matter how close you zoom in on this uh, parabola here, it's going to always appear smooth because of uh, the smooth transition in associated with actually running the equation. Um, and so all fonts are based on this. Uh, so they're all based on vector graphics. So you can continue to scale them up, 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 and they never appear pixelated. So that's um, essentially, those are two good examples. I think the, the photograph and the um, font of two types of graphics that you guys are comfortable using and are familiar with as you've sort of gone through um, up to this point in your education. Now, what ends up happening is um, this becomes uh, a pretty interesting divide here. Uh, we have JPEGs, GIFs, uh, PNGs, PSDs, Photoshop documents, uh, bitmaps, BMPs, and TIFFs. Those are all um, raster type graphics that can become pixelated. Um, there is a longer list of this, but um, this is probably all you guys are going to be dealing with um, in terms of your guys' uh, careers. Um, and just in terms of talking about this, JPEGs, that's stuff that um, comes in photographs. Um, GIFs, you can generate uh, very short animations with. PNGs are portable network graphics. These are designed for the web. Um, and a key function of these is that these only run in RGB, that is your screen resolution color. Um, Photoshop documents, you know, you'll get more familiar with that. Um, bitmaps, uh, really the worst image graphic that you guys have. They're heavy and they're not really uh, accommodating for a lot of systems. Um, and then TIFFs are really a nice way of sort of in a raster format, uh, maintaining um, high amounts of information. Um, I don't generally use TIFFs all that often anymore. Um, if I'm going to be working with something I need that kind of resolution with, I'll just shift it over to um, a vector graphic. And then here on the other side, uh, we have um, AI. That's an Illustrator document, a DXF, Digital Exchange File. Um, that's an AutoCAD format that was developed. Uh, essentially, if you're ever transferring in between softwares um, and you don't know if they're going to talk to each other, DXF is going to be the format that you guys are going to want to go with. Um, and then you have DWGs. That's, again, another AutoCAD format. Um, and then Swift Shockwave Files. That's where you guys will see websites and things like that using that um, Swift animation stuff. Um, and hopefully you guys are starting to get this. Uh, a lot of the modeling softwares um, are based on a similar principle. Um, mesh modelers are based on raster graphics, so you have a set of coordinates, and as you zoom in, those coordinates, you don't get any more coordinates out of that. Um, whereas NURBS models are based on vector, um, all of the surfaces you might generate in Rhino, for example, are going to be based on mathematics, and then those can be infinitely smooth. All right, uh, and so then we want to talk about image resolution very briefly. Um, you can just, in, just as you guys are paying attention to this, um, 35 millimeter um, widescreen film formats, like if you guys would take a photograph with, and have a negative, I don't know if you guys are probably at the age now, you guys probably have never seen a negative, but uh, either way, um, there's a certain amount of content that's going to be able to be captured by this uh, piece of film. And uh, as you go up in IMAX, this is the a film swatch for IMAX. You can see why um, there's so much more content that's going to be able to be captured by that, um, just based on its size. 
when you guys are working with these graphics, it's important to understand that um, you never want to edit your original. Um, and the reason for that is if you are have this really nice um, high resolution image and then you scale it down and down downsize it for whatever reason in Photoshop because you're trying to create a graphic for your presentation board or, uh, or whatever you might be doing, this cannot be brought back up to its previous resolution. So you always want to make sure that you're maintaining this and, and you're not going to be damaging your original and you can create copies of that um, as you go through that. All right, uh, and then for print, uh, 72 DPI um, is going to be any web graphic that you're going to be creating. Um, the reason for that is every screen or monitor that you guys are going to be working on is at 72 dots per inch. And so if you're going higher than that, you're really just wasting the file size and the format. Nothing's going to be any better. You can see that that's not a great resolution um, for just visually seeing that. Um, and then if you're going to be going for print, that's going to be usually 300 DPI is going to be a good baseline to start, um, get nice, clear, crisp text, things like that. And you can see that there's some issues associated with 72 DPI on that. Um, and those are things you guys want to pay attention to as you guys are going for um, and setting up your guys' uh, board presentations or um, if you're doing anything like that. Um, generally speaking, and I'm going to probably make you guys solemnly swear to never uh, put text in a Photoshop images in an image, you're never going to take a 300 DPI um, snapshot of any text. You should just be using vector graphics. You should have the skills in InDesign um, to have uh, that file host both both vector and raster graphics so that you can maintain those resolutions in a PDF format. And that's essentially what I've done here. If you look at this, like all of this text is being hosted um, against those uh, raster graphics. Okay, start with the best. Uh, when you guys are working in uh, scanning in some of your graphics, there's a thing you wanna pay attention to that's um, really important is uh, most scanners are designed so that they're to set up to scan uh, photographs by default. Uh, if you guys are scanning sketches, generally speaking, that's going to be a black and white image uh, unless you are using a lot of color and rendering. Um, if you're doing that, if you set it to black and white, it will do a lot of the Photoshop cleanup for you. So just make sure you're checking those setups. Uh, and then use high quality images. Um, if you guys are scanning, make sure you're scanning at least 300 DPI, um, depending on what it is you're doing. If you know that you're going to be zooming in or blowing something up and you're scanning it at 300 DPI, as you scale it up, again, you're going to lose that resolution. So if you're going to be blowing up something twice as large, select, select that section and scan it in at 600 DPI um, when you're doing that. All right, um, and then we'll get into this a little bit later, but talking about how you can uh, develop graphics. This is a diagram done in InDesign. Um, where we're hosting um, both vector and um, raster graphics from uh, both photographs, screen captures, and renderings that are in here. Uh, and this is uh, from a colleague of mine when I uh, worked in New York, um, the master renderer. Uh, doing, he did this in Studio Max. Um, the actual project we were working on is this right here, um, and he just literally was able to render out um, the reflections based on that. Okay. Um, but these are going to be some of the kind of composite images that you guys should be able to, to generate from this. Um, there will be an exercise later on where you guys are going to develop some entourage and the, with the hope that you guys all share each other with each other um, the entourage that you develop because it's going to be an important library for you guys to have. Um, you'll note that whenever you guys are doing these sort of architectural-esque presentations, it's really important for these spaces to feel populated so that when you're presenting to a client, they don't have to use their imagination to fill them with people and users and clients and people who are going to be spending money in their shops. Uh, and that becomes a really critical thing because you don't want this to look like a ghost town where um, there's one guy standing here looking like he's going to have a shoot uh, shootout with the guy um, standing down the way. Again, and this takes a lot of time. Uh, this is, there's probably uh, 30 hours invested in this one image. But okay, and then once you guys have these things, vector graphics, I like putting this image in here just because it's a good example of what not to do. Um, this is something I did when I was a student. Um, I developed this really, really nice vector graphic in Illustrator, and then I exported it to Photoshop, and I immediately got it to become pixelated uh, because I wasn't paying attention to that. And there's really no reason for that. Um, it's a novice mistake, um, but it's something that I did. Okay. Um, and then again, another thing, uh, here's an image from um, way back when. Uh, if you guys go into uh, Illustrator, there are some live trace uh, image functions that I will be going over later on in the semester as well um, that will teach you guys how to um, take raster graphics and convert them into vector graphics. And you can see that there's some 
It doesn't do this uh, exceptionally cleanly um, in the case of photographs, but it, uh, it can be really, really handy in the case of um, try, if you have a nice rendering that you want to start to read a little bit more crisply as you scale it up, um, that that can help with. All right. So just remember the difference. There's obviously a Mario theme throughout this, but um, pay attention to all that.